Hey there, everybody. Fet here, and welcome. Fet plays Age of Wonders Planetfall. A game by Triumph Studios and published by Paradox Interactive eh, sometime in 2019. Later 2019? I don't know. It's on the Steam store. Anyway, Age of Wonders is a pretty storied series itself with uh, mostly fantasy games behind it. I believe this is actually their first time into like futuristic and sci-fi. And if you don't know what Age of Wonders is, think the tactical combat of, say, an XCOM merged with the 4X gameplay of, say, a Civilization or a game like that. That's kind of what the Age of Wonders series has always been with a little bit of um, overworld spells to it. If you like really into old school classic strategy games, then Master of Magic is probably uh, a game that's familiar to you, and it is something that Age of Wonders kind of took and ran away with, their kind of formula. Actually don't know how exact, how, how much they were inspired by uh, Master of Magic, but I, I imagine it's a bit. Anyway, the whole objective of the game is basically you land on a planet, you spread out on the planet, you either conquer the planet or unify the planet, and then it's your planet. So we're going to try to claim a planet, basically. And I could do that just through the new planet button, but with the newest um, expansion of the game, Star Kings, apparently you can found a whole empire and create uh, basically a continuous multi-campaign galaxy of your own. Basically what we're going to do is try to create an Imperium. Anyway. With that in mind, we're going to start with the Found a New Empire button. You can also see Commander Customization in there. I already got like a handful of customized commanders ready to go. So, let's dive into Found a New Empire mode. I do have all of the expansions and everything with it. I got it when it was on sale, I'm not going to lie. So, that's kind of what we're starting with. We're also going to start with uh, the Ragamuffin Empire, because of course we are. And you know what? I am a green and gold kind of guy. We're going to go with green this little bit that's a little bit more gold than the other one and you know i do kind of like the star icon although you can have more of a i just saw it here like a basic star here but no nah, i like this one this one this one reminds me a little bit more of a like a, a rimworldly vibe to it so let's create a new empire done all right we have no planets yet we're a planetless empire don't worry about it uh if a little bit more on the backstory of this game. Basically, there was a star union once upon a time that was kind of like an empire, basically, uh, with many different uh, species and races under its wing, all this good stuff. Uh, they did something science-y and exploded, is basically what I'm summing it up as, and it's all fragmented now. So we're going to try to find our own new empire. The star map is this screen. It's pretty great. Hall of Heroes is this screen. It's pretty great. Uh, progression is this screen. It's pretty great. It's where you can level up your different um, races and secret technologies. Secret technologies are uh, basically a group of tech trees that have special... their own special traits to them. You level them up and you research them as time goes on. And the reliquary is basically where a bunch of relics are. You get them by taking over planets with particular traits or by doing the main campaign, which I'm not doing today, but maybe someday. All right, Hall of Heroes. Let's go ahead and recruit our first heroes. There's a bunch of uh, default ones in the library. I'm sure they have some story purpose to them. Then someday we might care about that. Custom's what I want, though. Yo, I'm going to recruit all of our boys. So I don't have to customize a dang thing. And don't worry, you'll figure that stuff out later. I'm going to actually make non-recruitable. There you go. See, the rest of them, though, you'll be able to recruit as time goes on. So... So, we had myself, of course, as you saw. We have Croc, the Barbarian. He's a dragon now. It's pretty great. We got uh, Dismas over here. He uses Void Tech, which basically means that uh, he can use teleporty, physics-defying stuff, because why not? Paracelsus, the Plague Doctor, uses Xenoplague Secret Technology, which does... Plague things. I mean, kind of speaks for itself. Reynold, clad in gold. He looks awesome. Also, he drives a mech. You'll see it later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's an oath-bound Celestian. It's exactly what you think it is. Uh, 
Moving on. We got Sai Volgari. I let Sai create his own character. He decided to be buff woman with void tech. So in the crew you go. And you know, we're not gonna have them right away, but we'll see we'll see them later. We got Urus McUrus, uh Devar, which is basically a dwarf. And a Promethean, which basically means he fights with fire and burns things. He likes to destroy things. Vasilla the Wastelander and Assembly, which is basically a cyborg, using Cynumbra, which is basically dark psionic powers. Who else do we got? We got Volpi, another Amazon. This time a Celestian, like Reynold. So a little bit of um, healing, inspiring abilities there. And then finally, Wulgar Silvermane, an oath-bound like Reynold, but unlike Reynold, also a Promethean, which means he likes to make things burn. He will, perhaps, get the Heavy Flamer. Alright, so we have our first group of ten heroes, who we may see later on in the actual game. We have, uh, ten out of fifty, by the way, so, you know, you know, these are the ten that are going to be locked into the current run, but if we play this again in the future, maybe we'll have room for some more. With that all out of the way, let's head back to the star map and conquer our first new world. What do we have the choice of? New Haven? Sure, that's final. And New Nomino. All right. So all planets have traits. I'm going to leave the um, settings over here to the default, which is six players. Actually, that changes depending on the uh, complexity of the planet. Uh, game intensity, normal. Opponent level for AI, normal. World size, medium. Land mass type, random. I'm just going to leave all that as is. So let's take a look at the traits of Nunomino. Mutated Fauna. This world features strange and mutated fauna, making creatures more resilient. All wildlife gains 5 health. Squeak line is health. Um, uh, uh, point of armor, which deducts damage. And mutant. Which I'm not entirely sure what that does. Thankfully, this game has a pretty good encyclopedia. Promethean Research Lab. All silver and gold landmarks are replaced with Phoenix Vaults. Once a hub of the Phoenix Division's Promethean Research. Okay. Secondary objectives are things that you can complete to help your empire later on. You'll get that Imperial Renown, as you see there, which you can trade for empire upgrades. We'll see more of that as we get into it. While mutations are a danger to the ecosystem of this world, the Amazon Matriarchs may be more forthcoming if you stabilize the situation. Each spawner, basically they spawn extra enemies on the world map. Each spawner destroyed grants you a substantial empire renown and experience boost. And presumably the Amazonians will like that, which maybe helps with level ups. Not 100% sure on that. Promethean Secrets. Claiming this world's Phoenix Vault should appease the Promethean elements in your empire and grant us a significant insight into their advanced weapon systems. Each Phoenix Vault claimed grants you a substantial imperial renown and experience boost. Completing this objective will trigger a victory condition, so we could actually conquer this planet, presumably, if we capture enough of those vaults. And then you get extra experience for your empire, based on what the game intensity, opponent level, and what traits are on the planet. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's check out New Haven. It's an agri world. Wants a breadbasket for Star Union worlds around the sector. Still evidenced by the world's remaining installations. Food nodes and bronze food landmarks are common. We'll see what landmarks are a little bit later. Research ones are rare. Production ones are absent. Penguin Hive. Those beaked villains got here first. Lots of penguins here. Bountiful Harvest. Each food specialization gets you substantial Imperial Renown. Bad Company. The Celestian Fate has long demonized Xeno Penguins like the ones found on this world. And slaying them should get you into the Celestian's good graces. All right. Cool. And then finally, there is Jordat's Final. It is a mildly complex planet, so it's a little bit more complex. Quality over quantity. This world features precious little resources to maintain large armies. Focusing on quality over quantity is paramount. Apparently, Tier 1 and Tier 2 units will cost 50% more in upkeep. That sucks. Uh, disputed claim, which is why it's worth 20%. Disputed claim. Two Devar Consortia have laid claim to this world and have brought significant resources to bear to reinforce it. Or to enforce it. A confrontation between them seems inevitable. There are two Devar consortia present on this world. So two of the uh, AIs presumably will be Devar. They have brought additional forces. War between them seems inevitable. Which means there probably won't be a peaceful way of capturing this planet. Making up the deficiency. 
The assembly are nothing if not efficient. Show them you know how to compensate for setbacks like those in this world. Each energy specialization grants you Imperial Renown. And settle the claim. The Devar Consortia have informed your diplomats that this world is being feuded over by two rival consortia. Brokering a peaceful resolution may appease them greatly. Forge an alliance with both Devar for massive Imperial Renown and experience boost. Doing that will trigger a victory condition. Alright. I want to start with the evil penguins. <laughs> Unlocks a relic. Taxidermied Penguin Lord. I have to do it now. I want that relic. Okay, so once you've selected a planet, we pick our commander. And uh, I'm going to start as a commander myself for our first one. I am a Vanguard Synthesis commander. Vanguard is the race. It's basically the rough folk with futile society. It's, it, 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 it's, a lot of them are human, but they're like the... I don't even want to say, like, the re regular human, because you could argue the Syndicate are also regular humans. It's hard to quantify the Vanguard, almost, but they're, they're, they're shooty boys. Let's put it that way. They're shooty boys. Uh, so the effects of long interstellar travel and cryosleep don't matter. Uh, starting, starting units in uh, Vanguard armies start with one level or rank, and all units made start with one rank. They use firearms. They use lasers. There are other weapon groups, like ARC, which is electricity, and um, psionic. Deploy combat drones and turrets. Use propaganda and uh, military force. And then powerful ranged units, but weak melee. And some of our heroes will be melee, which will hopefully make up for that deficiency. All right, the syndicate by the or the synthesis, by the way, manipulates AIs to our advantage, hacking and compromising systems for their own game. Basically, I'm a nerd. I can deploy AI demons in battle, hack and override enemy mechanical units, bolster strategic operations and use arc and kinetic damage channels. So, we'll see how that actually works out when I hit next and start getting into the game proper. That's right, 12 minute introduction. What are you gonna do about it? Hopefully you'll keep watching. That's right, there's more. Choose requisition items. So this is where you would use your Imperial Renown uh, once you actually buy these after getting into the game. But what this does is allow me to select some units from a race that I have not picked. So I am the Vanguard, so I can't select the Vanguard Owl, which is a scout, or the basic trooper. But I can select, for example, an Oathbound. That's what um, Reynold is. So if I, if Reynold were the actual commander for this uh, particular conquest, I would not be able to select Oathbound, but I could select Vanguard. What that does is allow me to select units that I would not normally have in my army. And I actually do like the, the uh, Paladin Aspirant. Uh, but I think I might go for someone belonging. You know what we need to make up for is the fact that our melee is practically non-existent, maybe we'll go for the Assembly Scavenger. They have melee. They cost 100 renown to actually be able to recruit, though, which we'll get to eventually. We can also take an operation and a mod. Operations are something that you use either in battle or on the overworld map, and they have big effects. Like this one, which is what I'm going to take. Arc Discharge. You zap an enemy with lightning. Does high impact. We'll explain that later. And it can jump to two other targets. So it's, it's chain lightning, basically. It's chain lightning magic. And then mods. Mods are things that you can put on your troops to modify them and make them different. As far as what we're going to do, I have no idea. Static buildup module. Attacks from arc weapons have a chance to apply a static charge, which lowers lightning resistance. Flames, that's for psychics only. Flash payload. Explosives have a chance of blinding enemies. Yeah, we'll take that. We might not even unlock it later on, but we'll see. We'll consider it. Now let's dive into the Valor actual game. and strength to you, commander of the Vanguard Expeditionary Forces. Thank. Cryo sleep missions allowed you and your ranks of outcasts and adventurers to escape your past and claim new worlds for the Star Union. That was the plan. But while you were sleeping, the Empire disappeared. You will need all of your combat and survival skills to face the forces that brought down the Union. The past is about to catch up with you, Commander. Oh no, not the past. Let's go. And we shall make landfall in a desert area. Whoa, there's a city like literally right next to us. What the heck? This is already the wildest start I've seen in all of my test plays of this game. <laughs> what is this? An Imperial Energy Complex right next to it. That's a tier four. Okay. Slow down, that. Nobody knows what you're talking about yet. Okay. 
So we've landed. This is our first city. It is its name is blocked by my freaking banner. That's great. Its name is Sivtal. Look, <laughs> I'm gonna change it in a minute. So this is the overall map. You can zoom out quite a bit. You see strategic stuff like all of these big icons are special complexes that are here. Like the carbon crucible generator is a level four energy. Energy is basically cash in this world, in this universe. Galaxy? I don't know. Uh, food is food. It helps you grow your cities. Right now, Saivtal... I'm renaming that. Ragamuffin City. <laughs> it's uh, population four. The gear is production. How, how fast your cities build stuff. And the atomic symbol is research. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is a happiness icon. So if we capture that, people will be happier. All right. Moving on. This is an owl. He's a basic scout unit. He looks pretty great, as you can see. He's got a little laser on his on his shoulder here. We're going to send him the scout. Thankfully, this game provides you with an automatic explore button. So I can just click that, and he will do whatever he wants. With uh, preference to, he's going to go up here and grab this that's on the ground. It's a hollow pad, which means it probably has information on it. Neat. Let's take a look at ourselves. We start ourselves with a little army. We actually have our own owl. Yeah, that's right. We've got an owl in our army. He can laser repeater, which means he shoots. Taking a look at this screen real quick. 90% accuracy, 9 damage. It is laser damage. This is what the fire is. And a range of 5. Repeating means he will shoot for as many action points that he has. You start with 3 action points, and they go down as you move and take actions. We'll see that more in the battle arena. He can also use a targeting field, which makes enemies easier to hit. And he can go into defense mode. Almost every unit has some type of defense mode. These are our Vanguard Troopers, our regular lads. Look at our little Space Marines. They have assault rifles and grenades. Grenades can use do high impact staggers. As you can see, it reduces action points and cancels defense modes. Grenades are also good for destroying the environment, which can be handier than you think. This is a hacker. A hacker is because we are part of the... the I keep wanting to say syndicate. It's not the syndicate. It's the... Um, Synthesis. Yeah, because we're the we're the hacky, techy, nerdy boys. They have a hasher submachine gun. It fires electricity. They have targeting calibration. They can basically increase the accuracy of Vanguard units or mechanical units. They have a shrapnel virus. It's like a grenade, except it can also bleed enemies or compromise mechanics. And they can use the haywire demon, which can compromise or stagger mechanics. Or disable them. It's neat. Synthesis. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, okay. And this is a pug. Pug's pretty cool. I like the pug. He can use a cloud of blur. Smoke cloud. Makes it harder to hit. He can throw down a healing charge, but only once per battle. He can resupply so that anyone can use their re their abilities there on cooldown. And he also has biological recovery, which means that he heals you every turn. Every strategic turn, not every battle turn. He also has a laser. And this is me. I have an APC, because that's how I set up my commander. As you can see, I can actually switch my own weapon. Commanders and heroes, you can choose your loadout for. It's pretty great. Uh, I'm going to keep the grenade over the Imperial Revolver, because the Imperial Re Revolver is basically just a one-shoot gun. We have a ma mounted cannon, which is basically better in every way. We can also deploy a repair drone, which is pretty nice. Throw that grenade. We have tactical sensors, which will give everybody accuracy and morale. And uh, also, because we're really big, we uh, have some resistance to staggering. I also have a flaw in my own character, well-fed. Actually gives me, gives me 10 more HP, but I take more food as necessary. It's part of one of my character's downsides. He's gluttonous, I think it is. Anyway, not too big a deal. I don't have any mods I can give myself, though. I do have skill points, or at least I will when I level up. All right. Now we've gone through all that, let's actually start moving. I want to start moving over here, I think. Uh, this is an army of plants, a flower, a vine, a bee, and a giant pig. I hate this giant pig. We will have to fight this giant pig, though. Army power of 650. Our army has a power of 770, so we should be able to beat them. In theory. So we're going to start moving over there. See if we can. Alright, here's our city. It's pretty great. I told you, we're calling it Ragamuffin City. Okay, 
<laughs> we can recruit, of course. We can get a colonizer, which will make more cities. Our colonizer comes with a gun. Not all of them do. We can build military barracks or a central um, a central building in the city. And basically, this is just a single boost to a resource. Probably going to do science, because I like science. No sectors are annexed yet, but we have enough population to do so. For every four population, you can annex a com uh, sector and basically make it part of your city. Like, I could annex the X-Ray Desert up here and make it part of Ragamuffin City. But I'm going to wait until we can get this uh, power plant here. Hopefully, we can win that fight and get it. It would be really nice if we could. Uh, but yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna annex until we do that. And then finally, colonists, you can decide what what they're producing. Last one is happiness. More happiness they are, the more you get points in happiness event, which is right here. And also, if they're not happy, you can get an unhappiness event, which basically does bad things. Colony center, change the name. You can destroy it if you wanna. You apparently lose reputation for destroying your own cities. Makes sense. And also race relations with your own race, or whichever race the city is. This is our headquarters. We have a recreational dome in here. Provides happiness. By default. It's just something that we come with. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. I mean, these are stats for what the city's generating, too. You got energy, which I said was like currency, food, production, happiness, po population, total, and amount it can go up to. Yes, I know it's for 20. Nice. Influence, which helps you dealing with NPC factions, not AI factions. There's a difference. Research power, how strong its militia is, and this is Cosmite, which is like your premium currency. Except you don't have to pay real world money for it, so it's nicer. Alright, Imperial Uplink is online. We have 50 Imperial Renown. We can use it to buy these things later. We already discussed those, so nothing to worry about. Let's end our turn and let our little owl do some exploring. Yeah. Star Union diplomatic, diplomatic Data. I can read. I swear I've done it before. You find remnants of diplomatic reports dating all the way back to the golden age of the Star Union. Among these reports is data on several negotiation techniques which we can study and increase our influ influential plow power on this planet. We uh, learn from the past and get 15 influence. Hey, that's a nice start. Oh, and they all it also found an energy convoy. The remains of a convoy worth 25 energy. Neat. All right. Orders required. Let's do it. It's the growth. Okay, so this is an NPC faction. They are the growth. I should have known by the little icon above their head. So for millennia, we've lived in symbiosis with countless organisms throughout the systems, germinating wherever our seeds may reach. We sense your intelligence and would be interested in a symbiotic relationship. We are still cautious, however. What is it you seek? So this is actually fantastic for us, because if we're friendly with them, we can get them to give us this station without fighting. We can also go to war. Let's see those flowers wither. I'm not going to do that. I'm a nice guy. At least I like to think I am. Not the kind of nice guy you see on, you know, r slash nice guys. I'm not one of them. I hope not. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> so we'll seek to join you in a symbiotic re relationship. All right. Wise choice we find. Our relationship is just a sapling, but we require help. With matters that fall outside of our abilities. Can you be of service? Rewards have been made ready. What can we do for you? Horrors! Their cruelty knows no end. Cultists that boil our root nodules, consume our leaves, and pluck our children from the vine to be sliced and slathered in sugary nectar for their delight. Every growth tendril quivers at the horror of knowing there's a cult of humanoids known simply by the appellation Vegetarians. I've not seen this specific quest before, and it is great. All right, so he wants, they want us to kill four enemies, basically, within ten turns. If we do that, we will gain ten relation bonus, or favor, with them. Higher our favor, the higher our relation. Right now it's neutral, it'll go up to peaceful, then friendship, and then we'll be integrated, which means we get a whole bunch of potential bonuses. Uh, we'll get some influence, we'll get some food... And we'll get some research. I will accept this. And then we're going to not take this place right away. And we're going to head up this way. I also see something else right here. We're going to head to Donkey Dunes. What a fantastic name for a place. Uh, yeah, I know it's yet to be... Nope, stop. Okay. This is as far as we can go this turn. Alright, we can see them. 
Here's the vegetarians. My god. It's the Amazon Huntresses. Kirko Frenzied. These are a race of bug-like people. They are playable, actually. And a Kirko Transcendent. All right. Four enemies. Their power is 440, so this should be easy rares. And we also now know where this, this growth dwelling is. This is like their home or home city for this growth. Uh, the uh, Ganja Growth Mother Known Node. Neat. It, it's 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 their city. We're gonna set up some research now. Military research. So there's a whole tree. As you can see, it's pretty great. You can research both military and non-military research at the same time, which I really like. Uh, we have a couple of options to start off with. Nanite support, which basically gives us a couple of abilities used in battle. But also, more importantly, this. Nanite injectors. Something you use in battle to heal yourself uh, and give yourself some resistances for a couple turns. You can only use it once for battle, but it's basically any unit that you give this mod to gets to heal themselves for free. So I'm grabbing this and researching it as soon as possible. I'm not even looking at the others yet. That's important. Society research. These have to do with not combat. And I'm actually going to start with Frontier Policies, which is unique to the Vanguard. Frontier Policies will get us a Doctrine, which is something else we'll learn about in a little bit. Uh, Frontier Survival, which is bonus food in all of our colonies. Uh, doctrines are something that affects your entire entire uh, planet, basically. Your entire faction on the planet. So we'll research that. They'll both take four turns, and we'll end our turn. Don't worry, we're going to have a battle before this before this video is over. Another convoy. Nice find, my dude. Other commanders are moving. All right, turn three since planet fall. Let's head to Donkey Dunes and get this cult of salad. You, destroyer of plants, we've come to fight. They're rogue marauder units. Uh, we could try auto combat, which will automatically uh, start it, or uh, automatically resolve it. And we can also do manual combat. I'm going to do manual, but just to show this off, you can do auto combat. Okay, so if I did auto combat, we would have we'd lose this Vanguard Trooper. I don't want to do that. So I can retry it and actually play it myself. I really like the ability to do that, by the way. It's like, oh, you don't want to fight every fight, so you just throw it on the auto resolve. All right. So whenever you're doing a combat, the uh, defending side always gets to move first. So they're moving. You can speed up their moves as well, but I'm not going to do it yet. So this dude over here, this Transcendent, he's done Transfer Pain. So any damage that I do to this particular Frenzied gets reduced and transferred to the Transcendent. I don't like it, but I got to deal with it. So this is the map. It's pretty great. Uh, this is my Owl. It's pretty great. Uh, this is my Pug. All right, Trooper. So... How do battle work, you might be asking. Well, first of all, if you want to run away, you can you go to this line over here. Only the attacker is allowed to run away, by the way. If you're the defender, you're kind of screwed. Not my favorite mechanic, but it's what you got to deal with. Okay, so we got three action points, as you can see. Each movement takes away a certain number of action points. So, and the colors of the grid on the ground show you how many action points it takes to move somewhere. The first ones, these four, take no extra action points. So I can move those and still have all three action points left. Moving here will take one, moving here will take two, moving here will take three, which means you can't do anything afterwards, you can't even defend. It's like a sprint. If I move here, you can see the little shield will mean I have some cover. Chance to get hit is in half when being attacked through cover. Alright, so let's actually go here where we have this cover. Okay, so now we're here. We're actually close enough to shoot at these guys, but they have 27% chance to hit. And they hold control, I can see that we have some steady aim, which means this uh, trooper actually gets bonus aim while hiding behind cover. But the enemy's in defense mode. He's behind cover, and the range is pretty long, too. So the chance is low, but we do get to shoot twice because we have two action points left. That's what the repeating means on the assault rifle. It also has seven range, which is pretty good. Uh, we could also choose to throw a grenade, but I'm not going to do that. What I might do is actually move everyone else first and then decide what to attack if we attack. So I'm going to move this trooper over here. We're going to hide behind cover here as well. However, there's no one for you to really attack. So I'm going to have you go into Overwatch. You do have to aim the Overwatch. But other than that, it works exactly how you'd expect it to from like XCOM. He will protect this area. Anyone who does a move in there, um, as long as they're not hidden and for some reason, will be shot at with as many remaining action points as they have. Which for us is unfortunately just one. Hacker Boy! 
I could have you move right here. You don't have an Overwatch move, so you can only do so much. You could shoot from here. Hmm, I could also have you move somewhere. I think this might be the best place for you, though. Unless we move you over here, maybe, to start with. Lots of cover right in this spot. I might move you last. All right, Owl! You know, Owl could do some cheap things. He flies, so cover is not really a thing for him. We could use the laser repeater, but we won't. What I'm going to do is actually use our targeting field on you. To make you 35% easier to hit. So now our chance to hit is up to 45%. But wait, there's more! What if I move this pug over here? 35% chance to hit, but wait, there's more! What if I hold alt and instead try to attack this? We've blown up the cover. Oh boy, he's not covered anymore. Now we're at 75% chance to hit. Shoot him. All right. It's an easy breezy 14 damage. Well done. He also lost, they also lost the unit. The little units dying don't really mean anything. You have full strength even at like no health. Still, it's kind of cool to watch. You could also click on the enemies to see how much movement points they'd have too. So he's this thing is probably going to come up close to attack. Now, with that in mind, you can blow up the cover, which is great. You can... Now we can't move with our pug, but that's okay. We don't need the healing right this minute. Let's move... Let's move our hacker right here. I'm just going to keep him in cover for now. All right, and then we got myself ready to move. My attack only takes one action point, but he only shoots once. So I can go basically wherever. I'm going to actually concentrate our shots over this way. I kind of feel like I might have made a mistake keeping this guy over here. He's kind of isolated, but we'll see how that works out. Take a shot. Bam! 13 damage. Good stuff. Next turn, I'll point out something about the accuracies. But for now, that's the end of our turn. They're moving around. They got this Huntress here who's going to shoot at us with regular shot or nope, blinding shot. Ah, damn it. There goes our accuracy. They also staggered our trooper, which means he lost an action point. You're going after the pug? No, you're shooting me with Battle vomit. Gross. Overwatch was triggered. He shot at this guy, but he absorbed the pain and went to the Transcendent instead. Battle vomit. So the hackers are now choking, which I believe lowers accuracy. 25% accuracy and damage. Ouch. Then he also tried to side strike over here. He regenerates, too. This dude just has built-in regeneration? Yep. Of eight. Yikes. Okay, so... I'm blinded, but I'm still close enough to shoot your ass. Let's see, this trooper... Oh, we still have 95% here. I'm gonna go for that. This should be... Between that and the pug, this should be a guaranteed kill. If we don't get the kill, this dude has uh, melee overwatch. A little sword above the health. Most units who have melee attacks automatically get melee overwatch at the end of their turn. Usually. Enemy destroyed. Alright, one down! Three to go. So we're going to take turns looking at the other side here. So we only have 55% chance to hit here. Part of that is the, the uh, wait, the absorb pain actually reduces the accuracy? That's weird. Uh, so the accuracy works like this. If your accuracy is a 75% chance, you actually have a 100% chance to hit, but you have a 25% chance to only inflict a grazing blow, which does less damage and can't stagger enemies, so you can't take away their action points. So, that's something to keep in mind. We technically have an 80% chance to hit here, 20% chance to miss, and a 25% chance to only do a grazing blow. Anyway, what about you? 60%? Oh, no, no, no. We're gonna throw a grenade. We're gonna throw it right here, and it should stagger him. It did not. He only grazed with it. Dang it, that sucked. Alright. Well, let's have you use your three shots, hacker. You're doing damage over here. As long as we do more than eight damage. Yeah, he did ten damage, which is good. Can't believe we missed that. Uh, I have to decide now. Do I want to go after you? No, nah, I think I'm going to move over here with our lads. Hi! I'm in a truck. I have armor. That's how that works, right? We only have a 60% chance to hit because we're blinded. So instead, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop out our healing drones. The healing drones will last for four turns, and they can heal every turn that they're around, so we're going to make use of them if we can. Wait, who hasn't moved? 
Oh, my owl hasn't moved. All right. Well, let's get our owl over here. Green means we'd have a very good chance to hit. But let's just go with the double. Two shots in the yellow, which still equals 45. Yeah, it's good enough. Hit twice. This dude absorbed all the pain, but it still did a good amount. Okay, they're moving. Yep, they're meleeing. That's what I thought they were going to do. They did get a stagger. Most melee attacks do have stagger. He also gained Frenzy. Uh, yeah, they're probably gonna kill that guy. Damn it! I said it at the same time as the AI. Oh, he can heal himself, too. That's great. Alright, no, that's perfectly fine. At least now we have a great chance to hit. He's actually... Fa these, uh... These Frenzied are actually facing over here. So, technically, our hackers can flank him right now, which definitely helps with the accuracy. So, shoot him three times. He's gonna absorb all the damage, but he's gonna take a ton of damage. Alright, we're still flanking. Alright, there's another shot. We might actually kill that Transcendent this turn. Okay, where's our Owl? Right here. Shoot him three times. Alright, the Transcendent is down. Move our Pug over. Pug only shoots once, so we can use as many action points as we need, as long as we keep one. Fantastic. Alright. Repair drones, uh... Well, you're a little injured here, guys, so heal them. There you go. Alright. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually st uh, stagger... Actually, no. Before I do that, move right here. Hopefully that'll get their attention and they won't try to go after any of our other lads. Then we're gonna throw one right here. Oh, it's also gonna, also gonna proc Overwatch. Except it won't, because he got staggered and staggered. Cancels Overwatch. So you have two movement points... You have three action points, but whatever. Yeah, he still went past us and went after the hackers. Dang it. Well, thankfully, you were only able to attack once. And they are just shooting from where they are, which means they're going after our troopers. Did a lot of damage, but we do have heals. Okay. I'm going to move here. I'm going to flank this bastard. That's two down. All right, and I'm going to see if our owl can actually finish this fight. Or finish you off. Enemy nice. Down. All right, hacker, what's your 50% chance to hit there? Okay. Pug, heal. That's right, you have that one-time heal. And then repair drone heal. Troopers, 85%. Hell yeah. Let's go. That was a graze. There you go. There's a real hit. Eight damage. Eight there, too. You don't have any armor, do you? Do these uh, ladies have any armor? No, they don't. That's why they're taking so much. All right. Finally, our hackers are up. Uh, from where they are, I could get a higher hit chance if I moved over, but I'd have to move out of cover to do that. I feel like that's not a good idea. So let's just go ahead and shoot. We might actually get the kill. Our forces are victorious. Hot damn, they did it. Not bad, 50% chance. We still lost the troopers, which is too bad, but... Well... We can make more. <laughs> Alright, they're down. Complete. Our leaves are tranquil upon the wind. We will never forget the horrors of this cuisine, but we recognize your contribution in eliminating them. We could sell the rewards for 45 bucks, but uh, everything we're getting is worth way more than that. So we're just taking it. Now, our relations have improved. We are now at peace with them, which means we could actually use our influence, the 35 influence we have, to trade for worker bees, soldier bees, or a mod called Poison Glands, which would actually have all melee attacks to give a chance to poison enemies. So yes, we would like to trade with you. Let's see, we could buy a bee. I'm not gonna, though, because we actually need to keep that influence for right now. You'll see why in a little bit. Uh, there's another Transcendent here, but I'm going to leave you alone. We got other things to worry about. Okay, we're going to turn around. Ragamuffin City can produce something. Uh, specialist Training Center. No, no, no. Let's replace our troop first. 35 energy and how much per turn? Four per turn? All right. Yeah, replace our lad. Hmm, found some food. Nice. Ragamuffin City's now up to population 5, which means what I'm probably going to do now is get us a colonizer. It costs 50 and 10, 50 energy, 10 Cosmite, and a population from Ragamuffin City. It will cost more for every colonizer that you 
recruit. So what I want to do is actually have a city at least one space away from Ragamuffin. Like, so I'd like it here in the Illusory Desert or in Friendship Flats. Love these names. Uh, we're going to head back to the Crucible Generator right now, though. All right. And our lad here, he can't quite reach. So stay in our stay in our region, but start heading toward my army. Hey, we've got a happiness event. Production. Happiness event in colony. Nice. Ooh, a lost sentinel. Next to the energy pods, we found a nearly depleted but still intact unit. A sentinel, which is these guys. It appears to be unable to connect to its control hub, giving us a unique opportunity to use it for our cause. We can use the energy pods to power up this uh, sentinel, and then we would have it under our control. We could ignore it and loot the pods to get 49 energy, or we could power up the sentinel and then free it to gain 100 reputation. Which will help us on the world stage. For now, I do kind of like the idea of having it. It is an autonom unit, basically a Skynet. Uh, it has omnidirectional camera, so it has Overwatch in all directions. It gets more damage in Overwatch. And it, yeah, it has a lot of good stuff. I think I'm going to take it. We could build up our reputation later. There it is. All right, get back to Ragamuffin City, please. Thank. That'll end that turn. Pretty fair turn, if I do say so myself. All right, uh, go here, and then I will join up with you. Boom. Army of six back together. Uh, we have unlocked the Technologist, which is a Empire-style mission that we could do. Apply five unit mods. Use five tactical operations in combat. All right. We would get a random hero item if we can do this first before anyone else. Cool. We've researched nanite support. Quantum powered molecular machines are not magic. They're science. But the uncertainty principle dictates that if I explain to you exactly how it works, it'll stop working that way. So just trust me. It's not magic. It's just probabilistic quantum state driven subatomic machines. Stanley Strangelove, publicist, Small Tech Enterprises. You don't say. We get those nanite injectors I told you about. And in battle, we can use a nanite support station. It drops a healing support station, which obscures everyone near it, giving them more defense. And it can heal everyone near it uh, at the start of each turn. And we can get, or we can get, I should say, a combat assist system. I should say and. We could actually drop both of those in the same, if we had enough uh, points for it. Combat assist system gives whoever it's attached to uh, two shield. Get sort of status effects for up to three turns. All right, new combat research. Next, I want to go for synthesis integration. This is specific to uh, my secret tech. This gives us a, a guardian demon shell, a targeting demon shell, and integrated military networks. Integrated military networks make all of our mechanical and cyborg units integrated. Which means it can help with some of our uh, boosts here. It, it, it can give us boost. I love this demon shell. It's accuracy and crit chance. Not to mention 10% extra damage. I love this demon shell. It's 20% extra chance to avoid ranged attacks. Which is kind of awesome. So yeah, we're researching that right now. Frontier policies. We Vanguard are better suited for a more self-reliant life on the frontier. Big city rules and civilian luxuries make a fighter like me soft around the middle. On the frontier, a soft middle makes an easy target. Teddy Slade, Vanguard Infantryman. Teddy Slade, great name. All right, that gives us that frontier survival, which is extra food. We could alternatively get the uh, Colony Militia Doctrine, which lowers the production cost of units and also can lower it farther uh, for each military infrastructure or defense building in the colony. And then we can also build the Combat Simulation Center, which gives... Uh, our units experience per turn just for sitting on or near our colony center. It's pretty neat. All right, what do we research on this end? I'm thinking cyber optimization. It's a synthesis upgrade. Um, we could get worker integration, extra production and energy uh, for every colonist working in those slots. It also gives us an extra doctrine. Available Right now, we only have one Doctrine slot, which means we can only activate one at a time. Uh, however, it's seven turns. That's a long-ass time. So maybe we'll start with area surveillance. 
Yeah, it's not as it's not as punchy, but it's helpful. We'll start with that. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go talk to these plants again. Hey, plants! We require this position. Please vacate. It would cost 23 influence to ask them to leave. We understand your request. We have decided to comply and will seek elsewhere to germinate. This patch of soil will be yours to cultivate. And with that, boom! 50, uh, 50 energy for claiming the sector, for claiming this spot. And then we're going to annex this landmark to Ragamuffin City. There's a lot to be discussed about annexing sectors, but basically... This thing has two mountain and two energy slots, which means that if we decide to exploit this place for... Did I say mountain? For its production. If we decide to exploit it for its production, we'll gain a lot out of it. If we decide to exploit it for its energy, which is what we're going to do because it has this energy complex, we'll get a lot out of that as well. This complex, man. We're going to be making a lot of money. See? There you go. Energy exploitation. What you do with the sectors is you take a sector, you add it to a colony, and then you exploit it to gain extra income. So this is going to be a big energy producing sector for Ragamuffin City. We're now also ready to prime operations some op- available for priming. Yeah, well he said. So we need to prime operations before we can use them. So I'm going to prime Frontier Survival. It's going to take two turns. There you go. It also cost us uh, 50 energy to start with and six strategic operation points. There you go. Uh, that's basically what you use to prime these. We also have tactical operation points over here, and these are the ones that you use in battle. Alright, cool. I have movement points, so I have orders required. Let's go to this purple thing here. You'll see why when we get there. Alright, let's end our turn. There goes our little autonom. Coming back home. What are you finding over here? There's a lot of things. Resource node over here. This guy is sitting on a 420 power. Nice. He's sitting on a shelter, though. Ooh! Refugees to join as colonists? Hell yeah! Alright, we got our first colonist uh, machine here, so... Colonizer. I really want to do either Friendship flat, Flats or Donkey... Not Donkey Dunes. Or Illusory Desert. However, there is a Veil of Tranquility here. Minus 20% science. But, the colony who owns the sector gains 8 happiness. Non-mechanical and non number units gain extra health per game turn. And enlightened units are healed every 10 combat turn. And units with Soulborn take additional fire or laser damage. Wow. Yeah, I kind of want to make sure I claim that sector for myself. So let's get you guys moving up there. You don't have a lot protecting you, but we have our army that's going to follow you. So it'll be fine, probably. That's pretty awesome. Okay. What do we do here? Well, now that we have a sector, we're going to build the shielding laboratory for the carbon crucible generator. All units produced in this colony will now have plus one shield. Neat. All right. After that, let's go ahead and get the uh, carbon, or the carbon, the uh, combat simulation center started. We could then start uh, recruiting units in this area and just let them sit here to level up. And they'll all start with extra shields. By the way, you may have noticed there's both shields and armor. Armor reduces uh, damage, except on psionic attacks. Shield reduces damage to ranged attacks and ignores melee. 22 energy, nice find. Anyway, there's a purple thing here too. We're about to show you what that means, but there's a world event. Oh crap. Magnetic field disruption. Planet's magnetic field is constantly present, but has variable strength. We're seeing an increase in its strength right now, and it's wreaking havoc on our communications, in addition to inducing static charges in a number of different objects. Influence income is reduced by 50%. That kind of sucks. Every two turns during combat, static charges deal four uh, arc damage, or electricity damage, and have a four strength chance to apply static charge to all units for two turns. Ugh. Not a good time to be fighting. Synthesis integration is done. If you ignore all the bugs, this is our best release to date. Fanatic, demo coder, perpetual root kit. The perpetual root kit, huh? I love these mods. Uh, and integrated military networks. All right. All of our mechanical and cyborg units are now integrated, which would include our pug and our owls. Also, militia units are integrated. Okay. 
So now what can we do? Demon deployment? To be able to slap down some demons? We can get combat subroutines, but I think what we go with next is actually a little bit more defense. I'm going to research smart defense modules, which will give us uh, this little guy. Improved combat sensors. 15% harder to hit and gains detection, which basically allows them to see, you know, stealth units. We could also opt for interlocking armor, which gains stagger resistance. Remember, stagger is what takes away action points and breaks overwatch. And to impact resistance. This is all right. Really what I want is that little uh, little drone, though. Area surveillance. If you want to improve your capabilities, you don't just set a goal. You must also monitor it. Only by carefully watching your progression, guarding against backsliding, can you achieve solid success. Tony Rubio Strong, Manpower and Machine Motivational Consulting. Yeah, that sounded like a motivational speech. Or at least an attempt at one. So area surveillance gives us deploy monitor. Basically, you slap a monitor on the ground and it, you know, tells you what's there. Uh, it is concealed. It can only be detected by other players with detection or if they move right next to it. And then they can be destroyed. Without triggering war, apparently. Native threat locator will show us where the nearest enemy spawner is. And capability ranking will allow us to see uh, everyone's rankings. <laughs> you have to research that for some reason. All right, with that done, I'm actually going to move to the second tier here as well and get operation effectiveness. What this will do is it'll give us three more strategic points and tactical points to use in battle or outside of battle for our uh, different strategies. Doctrine development will give us another doctrine slot and operational prowess will actually make our operations stronger and give them more defense. You go into the doctrine area here, you can see what we have. Available for priming. One strength and one defense, which means we're pretty weak right now. We'll build it up over time. The growth have sent us a message. Strength of the Mother Node and its saplings is linked to Sanriel's eternal light. When he smiles upon us, we grow and blossom. And when he travels and sleeps, we falter and winter, wither. <laughs> we know the unrooted can take many forms. The glassy carapaces your ancestors left behind intensify Sunreal's light and let us bloom prolifically. Would you help us create more of these carapaces your kind call a greenhouse? He wants to make greenhouses. All right, we get a worker bee if we do it. Uh, it does take the production from our colony, but I think it's worth it. Ten turns, we don't have to start on it right away. So, it takes two turns to build it. We could actually build all of both of these and still have time for this. So I'm going to do that. All right. The operator task has been unlocked. We've done a right. We've instituted a doctrine. Covert operation, strategic operation, and then operation effectiveness one, which we're actually researching right now. If we do that. We get some energy and we get this doctrine, the operator. We might spend some time on that. Frontier survival. Inactive. For as long as the Vanguard had been sent to remote worlds, they have been trained to sustain themselves while new supplies were en route. It's extra food. It's pretty great. Alright. With all that said and done, let's move you guys up. You're not a roamer, right? Okay, you're a Marauder Guard. This is important, because a Marauder Guard will never move from its spot. The Spice Sands. Ooh, I have to capture this place, because the spice must flow. Alright. We're going to step on this spot, which is a small anomalous site. And find out what it is. Our scanners have detected a faint signal of unknown origin being emitted from a distinct sandbank in the desert. We should excavate the sand to uncover the signal source. We can now spend three turns staying here and finding out what's here. Let's do it. Excavating the sand. While we're waiting here, though, our troops don't have to be doing nothing. We can actually go ahead and install mods on them now so that we can start using them. Mods cost both power and they cost Cosmite. I definitely want all of my troopers to have... Nanite injectors, so they can heal themselves. And I think I'm going to want them all to have... I'd love them all to have both shells, but this is, it's too expensive. That's 30 just for these two get, these two units. That's, that's a little too much. I think for now, I'm not going to give them the targeting shell. I'm just going to give them the uh, guardian shell, which is 20% harder to hit by range attacks, and then the nanite injectors. 40 power and 20 Cosmite to apply to both of these lads. Let's do it. And when you do that, you can actually name them. 
as a template so that when you make future units, you can, you know, make them under this template. So we'll call them... I don't know, dodgy? Yes, dodgy troopers. That's what I want. And our icon for them is going to be... I don't know, what works for dodgy? Diplomacy? Nah, nah, nah. Bravado bundle? The fist? The fi oh, the... Is that a clover or is that hearts? I mean, it looks like a clover made of hearts. I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, dodgy boys. So now they are upgrading. They will be upgraded next turn, and any of those I build in the future can have those upgrades. I can also mod my commander or any heroes that come in on by. So I'm actually gonna give myself uh, the Guardian Demon Shell as well to make myself harder to hit. And I think that's about it. I could give myself the Nanite Injectors too, but I can already throw out de uh, Deployment Drones. I don't have to wait, though. I get that immediately, which is pretty nice. All right. In my turn. What? Whoa, 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 whoa! There's someone up there! We met someone! They flew by. They disappeared. They're Amazon. Celia Var Varju. Varju? Is the, is the J silent or not? Anyway. Hail Thet, I'm surprised anyone without the benefit of Amazon Augment Augmetics could even survive in this place. What brings you here? I hope your ethics align with ours. Well, taking a look at our sidebar here, she's Amazon. We don't know what her secret tech is yet. Or we don't know her personality. We're neutral right now. We have no Casa Spelli, so no reason to go to war. But she likes us, it looks like. Uh, apparently, Amazons and Vanguards are an accepted race relation. Uh, we just met, which is a little bit of a negative, but that goes away soon. She apparently needs a friend and she wants to avoid wars. Fair enough. That's why she likes us. All right, show us where we met. I mean, I saw your bird fly in, so I know. I could say, nice to meet you, which helps our relation. Stay out of my way, which hurts it. Or I could be neutral and say nothing. I'm going to say, nice to meet you. What is it this time? We just met. Don't give me that, what is it this time? She's respectful towards us right now. Amazons like us, 300. We're accepted. Vanguard like us. The growth, we're at peaceful with them. And now we can enter negotiations. We can't offer a non-aggression pack for a couple of turns because we just met them. We can't become their overlord or make or vassal uh, because we just met them. And also, we probably don't have that power dynamic yet. We can trade energy. We can trade Cosmite. We can trade sectors if we wanted to eventually. And we can trade items if we had... Oh, wow. You already have items. You have a thermal grenade. Hmm. Fire grenade. It does not stagger like a standard grenade does. But it can make enemies burn. Blurring canisters. It's a mod. Throw a canister that creates a blurring cloud that makes units inside harder to hit. I don't know if I want to waste a turn for that in battle. But eh, it's cool. We can also declare a war. We also have the options to complement them. Which would use influence to give us relation. Insult them. Insult them. It'll give them a reason to go to war with us. And if they do anything that we, is worth warning them or denouncing them about, we can do that as well. Warning is a private, you know, condemnation. Denouncing is public. Everyone else will know about it. All right. Hey, we've unlocked the diplomat. Sign an aggression pact with someone else. Maintain a peaceful relationship for 10 turns. And if we're the first one to do it, we get a happiness reward. We've unlocked the warmonger. Enter a war and kill six units of another player. If we're the first one to do that, we get a tier two unit. Not really that big. Um, apparently she's already completed the Emissary, so she got a bonus of 25 influence. Which means she's met more factions than us, I think. Someone else completed it as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, do quests for pack for other factions. Oh, we didn't get enough quests! Because we've only met one faction. They must have met both of them already. There's two NPC factions on the planet. Shielding Laboratory is done. That's awesome. We can now build dodgy troopers by default if we want to. Uh, we just have to pay the Cosmite and a little bit of energy for it. The rest of it goes into production cost. Hmm. If I wanted to, I could rush this, but we don't have the 454 energy for it. That would, that would build it immediately. Happiness event in colony. We also got 10 extra influence from a happiness event. Nice. Oh, there's an enemy on that spot. Move up. Oh, dang it. What is there? Oh, it's, just, it's you. Okay. Move up. You should move off that spot next turn. And then we can get to this Veil of Tranquility and claim that sector for ourselves. 
And we can also see that our troopers now are now dodgy, which is pretty nice. Very, very nice. Oh, apparently we met Zana Cerber as well. She's a Devar. Hail, hey, stranger, you speak with the Devar. If you are here to undermine our efforts on this world, you will find us impossible to dig out. But we make loyal allies. Pick your intention and quickly. We have work to get back to. They also like us at 175. For the exact same reasons. Okay. Well, where did we meet you? Oh, you met our owl. Okay. Cool. And there's their actual territory. Nice to meet you. We can negotiate. I want to see if they have any items. They do not. So, we know about Celia. They do not. So, let's go ahead and introduce them to the Amazons. I'll take 80 energy for it, though, if you're willing to give it to me. I like this balanced trade. You can always see what's worth energy and what's not. Done. Cool. That doesn't really help our relations, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't. But, you know, we got good relations with them. Where people leave the Dark Age behind us and prosper together. We'll see. We'll see. So, that's how close they are to us. That's pretty darn close, all things considered. I might need to start expanding in that direction. Alright, just as I thought, she moved her unit. So now, we're gonna form a Vanguard colony here! Yeah! Yes, I want to go over the Veil of Tranquility. This place will be crappy for research, but it'll be great for a lot of other things. We're still working over here. One more turn and we'll see what's in this site. However, that turn's gonna have to wait until next time. Because that's going to be it for this episode of Fet Plays Age of Wonders Planetfall. If you enjoyed it, make sure to let me know by giving it a like if you haven't already. Feel free to subscribe for more because we're going to at least try to conquer this whole planet. And then, if you're still interested, who knows, we might make some future heroes and try to conquer some more. I'm actually kind of disappointed we haven't had one single hero recruit yet. But I think we're within one or two turns of getting it. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks again for watching this episode of Age of Wonders Planetfall. My name is Fat, and I will see you in the next video, my dudes.